for what we're about to receive. May the Lord make you truly thankful. Yes, you like it, come and it. 
this nothing that we lost it. Will you sit upon it and touch it? Will you sit? Oliver, Oliver Tiston. Sing your name. 
but you'll be wanting one before long if you keep cheeking your superiors. Now open up the blinds, you are the young scallywag. Hello, Noah. I said a little bit of bacon for Martha's breakfast. I'll go to the door. Take your bits and your tea and go and eat them. And make cakes, because they'll want you to mind the shop. Do you hear? Do you hear workouts? Oh, no, no. What tea do you want? Let the boy alone. Let the boy alone? I'm giving the boy a change, you silly thing. They all left him alone. His father left him alone. His mother left him alone. Everyone left him alone except dear old, kind old Noah. Eh, Charlotte? Ha ha ha. You are one. Workhouse. <coughs> How's your mother? You leave my mother out of this, she said. What if she died again? Shortage of breath? Never you mind. Oh, but I do mind. Well, you better not say any more, see? Better not? Better not? If you don't mind. The cheek of it. The workhouse cheek of it. My mother even says she was a nice one, she was. Well, workhouse. Can't be up now. Of course it couldn't be up then. But your mother was a regular right down bad done. What did you say? A regular right down bad done. And it's a good thing that she died when she did. Otherwise she'd be doing hard labour in prison. Get off of me! Get off of me! Yes. 
Got any lodgings? No. Money? Not a farthing. Are you staying in London? When am I at home? Now I suppose you'll be one someplace to stay tonight. Are you accommodated? No, I don't think so. Then accommodated you shall be, your pork sausage. Now, there's a certain house, and I know a certain gentleman what lives there, what will give you lodgings for nothing, and never ask for the change. This is, and that is, if another gentleman, what he knows, introduces you. And does he know me? I should say he does, not after he don't answer. Who is the respectable old gentleman, then? Is he a charity gentleman? I wouldn't exactly say that, exactly. But if I introduce you, it's all right on account of the fact that I happen to be a particular favourite of Mr. Fagin. That's his name, Mr. Fagin. Now, if I'm introducing you to Fagin, I better know who you are, me old China Plate. My name's Oliver, Oliver Twist. And my name is Jack Dawkins. Better know who I'm more intimate friends as the Artful Dodger. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Dawkins. Come to think of it. I ain't got no intimate friends. Still, what's the difference? You're coming with me. Are you sure Mr. Fagan won't mind? Mind? <laughs>
I shall have the pleasure of your most intimate acquaintance. Leave them alone! We are very glad to see you, Oliver. Very. Dodger, take off those sausages. Learn how to do this too, Oliver. Won't he, boys? 
Oh, yes! But in the meantime, you'll have to learn how to uh, make wallets, just like Roger and Charlie here. You'd like that, wouldn't you, Oliver? Oh, yes, if you'll teach me. <laughs> Certainly, my boy, no fee. Just do everything that Dodger and Charlie do. Make them your models, my dear. Especially Dodger. He's going to be a right little Bill Sykes. Now then, is my uh, handkerchief protruding from my pocket? Yes, I can just see the corner. Very good. See if you can take it without my feeling it. <laughs> Can't be straight. Like 
in store for you. Good luck on your first day, boys. I'll be here waiting for you when you come back.
that Rachel better. Are you not? Yes, sir. Yes, I know you are. You feel hungry too, don't you? No, sir. No. He's not hungry, Mrs. Benjamin. No, doctor. Do you feel sleepy? No, sir. No. Not sleepy. You don't feel thirsty, do you? If that voice does start eating my head. Are you? Yes, rather thirsty. Just as I expected. It's only natural he may be thirsty. You may give him a little tea and let him have a little fresh air. May I get up now, sir? Yes, I think you may. Don't let him get too warm, Mrs. Bedwin, but be careful not to let him get too cold e either. Will you have the goodness? Certainly. You'll be glad to be up again, my boy. Doctor, do you notice the most extraordinary likeness between that boy's face and that painter of my daughter Agnes? I can't say I do. I only know two sorts of boys. Mean-faced boys and beef-faced boys. And which is Oliver? Mealy. Where does he come from? Didn't I tell you he got arrested for stealing my pocket handkerchief? What, sir? It was all a misunderstanding, really. And when the shopkeeper told us what really happened, I cleared it with the magistrate and brought him here to make amends I could. Although I must confess, I find myself strangely attached to the child. He is deceiving you, my good friend. So he had a fever. What on it? Fevers are not cured to good people. Bad people have fevers too. He saw your pocket handkerchief. I'll be sure to steal more. What's the order from the bookshop, sir? Ah, oh, yes, thank you. Hey, wait a moment. The day has gone, and I particularly wish for some books to be returned today. Send Oliver with them. He'll be sure to deliver them safely. You know what? If he does, I'll eat my head. Uh, yes. All right. Oliver, take these books and say you've come to pay the four pounds and ten that Mr. Brownlee owes. Here's five pounds. It's not very far. It's just around the corner. But I should expect you back in ten minutes. Yes, please let me, let me take them from you. Miss Seddon, let us see. Ten minutes. <laughs>
whose books are these? They're Mr. Romano's. You've been stealing again, having you. You know you're a thief and a scoundrel.
times. And two weeks ago today it was done. It seems an age. I have sold myself for six teaspoons, a pair of sugar tongs, a milk pot, and a small price of second-hand furniture. All for what? Twenty pounds cash. Cheap. Dirt. Cheap. Cheap. You would be dear at any price, and do enough I pay for you. Lord about to know that. <coughs> Are you going to sit there snoring all day? I will sit here for as long as I think proper, madam. And although I was not snoring, I may snore, gait, sneeze, laugh, or cry, all as a human strikes me, because it is my prerogative. Your prerogative? I said the word, madam, my prerogative. A man's prerogative is to command. And what's the prerogative of a woman in the name of goodness? To obey! Your late unfortunate husband should have taught you that. And maybe he'd still be alive today, poor man. Oh, you hard-hearted brute. <laughs> No excuse. 
no present on the occasion when the boy was sold. Therefore, in the eyes of the law, you are more guilty of the two, as the law supposes that your wife acts under your direction. If the law supposes that, then the law is an ass. The eye of the law is a bachelor and the worst. I wish the eye of the law could see by experience. By experience! Yeah. 
feel honest. I wouldn't say nothing. Bill. Bill!